This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. The world is currently facing crisis upon crisis and is fraught with insecurity and instability. As a firm supporter of multilateralism, he defended globalization at the BOA Forum for Asia. During his decade in office, as Secretary General of the United Nations, he made a contribution by dispensing Eastern wisdom to the cause of development and world peace. In this edition of Leaders Talk, we meet Ban Ki Moon, Chairman of the BOA Forum for Asia and the Eighth Secretary General of the United Nations. Hello and welcome to Leaders Talk. We will meet leaders, thinkers, and trailblazers and Zhou Yun. We are currently in the beautiful island of Hainan, located in southern China, and we're here to interview our guest, Mr. Ben Ki Moon, Chairman of Fuao Forum for Asia. What are his views on regional and international cooperation in terms of new challenges and opportunities? As the eighth Secretary General of the United Nations, what are his insights on the unprecedented challenges faced by the world? And how can different countries work together to tackle global challenges and work on common solutions? Today, we're going to talk to our guest, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. Mr. Ben, thank you so much for taking our interview. Well, it was a great pleasure and honor to meet you here in the beautiful island of Hainan. Well, this year is particularly special given that it is the very first annual conference of Bua Forum for Asia that held fully offline after the COVID-19 pandemic. So how does it feel to be back here? Excited or a sense of um, deja vu? I'm very much pleased to be back to Hainan after almost three and a half years. Mm -hmm. During that time, those uh, blank uh, period, uh, we had to rely on uh, remote uh, virtual uh, conference, mm -hmm. but uh, you cannot compare with the real in-person conference to get a virtual conference. Mm -hmm. In that regard, um, it's very timely that we are having in-person conference for our forum for Asia when whole world is now suffering from uh, divisions and conflicts and climate actions and also uh, uh, still. So there are a lot of issues which we have to deal with. I really count on the leaders of the world, be they political or business or civil society leaders. Mm -hmm. We have to work together and uh, create some uh, global partnership to address global agenda for our future generations. That's the main purpose and my expectation. Well, the theme of this year's forum is uh, on a certain world solidarity and cooperation for development and make challenges. It aims to enhance mutual understanding and driving global recovery after the pandemic. So Mr. Ben, to you, what are the major challenges and the most pressing issues facing the world? I think we have chosen the right theme the uncertain world. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we are really uh, living in an uncertain world, completely divided, fragmented, ideological lines or political lines or whatever, the differences. There are so many differences without realizing that we are now facing and fighting against the times, mm -hmm. climate, change is fast approaching. People do not understand while they have been you know, hitting, they have been hit by all these um, unprecedented climate uh, events, mm -hmm. like uh, huge um, torrential rains and wildfires mm -hmm. and long spell of drought in uh, sub-Saharan uh, areas, etc., etc. Uh, therefore, we have to really be careful and we have to be uh, united to fight back all this uh, crisis. And that is why the Boa Forum for Asia has a role to play. Uh, we are having more than 2,000 political leaders, business leaders, uh, civil society leaders, academicians. So we have to really uh, show our commitment, first of all, 
than exchange of views and knowledge and experiences. The world is at a crossroads right now. To solve global challenges, the international community is eager to hear China's voice. The convening of the BOA Forum for Asia marks the Asian moment for global governance. The forum was born at the turn of the century. More than 20 years ago, Asia was hit hard by the financial crisis, and there was an urgent need to build consensus in the region and come up with a recovery plan, so the forum came into being. Starting from an unknown fishing village, the BOA Forum for Asia has grown into a high-level platform for dialogue in its 22 years of existence. It has put forward many valuable ideas in terms of promoting regional cooperation in Asia, advancing economic globalization, and working together to build a community with a shared future for mankind. Based in Asia and facing the world, the forum has grown into a high-level dialogue platform with Asian characteristics and global influence. Development and shared benefits, governance and security, regional and global, present and future. All these topics inject certainty into an uncertain world to solve the problems of the times. One of the most prominent issues that will be discussed by the delegates here at the forum is the cooperation and computation on science and technology. Well, unfortunately, the computation part has been increasingly politicized in some countries in recent years. We've heard a lot about decoupling. We've heard a lot about export restrictions on high-tech products. So how do you see this? And if this trend continues, what are the consequences likely to be? World Forum for Asia was created uh, a little more than 20 years ago. Right. At that time, to promote the economic integration of uh, Asia. Now, with the 20 years having elapsed, mm -hmm. while whole world is now changing in terms of political landscape, in terms of climate action, in terms of uh, some uh, divisions, etc. I think that the uh, World Forum should do much more beyond Asia. Of course, we have to do much more for Asian inter economic integration right. and cooperation with each other and also address climate change. Uh, but uh, Asia is just one part of the uh, whole world. And therefore, we have to see a longer vision. So as the chairman of the Boa Forum, mm -hmm. I used to argue that Boa Forum for Asia should change its even title. <laughs> change to what? Change uh, like this Boa Forum for Asia and beyond, so that we can really deal with the global agenda. Mm -hmm. Now, as I said at the beginning, we are living in an uncertain world, divided and fragmented by political ideology or some real uh, ideological issues or religious sometimes, mm -hmm. or some uh, political lines. And therefore, we really need to have uh, some global vision for global prosperity and global peace and global security. We may be living in Asia, but 8 billion people living on this planet. I think when some air people in some other areas are living in a very poor conditions or difficult conditions, then we cannot claim that we are living in a sustainable world. Sustainable world means that, first of all, there should be no person, nobody, who should suffer from abject poverty. There should be nobody who should die from preventable diseases. So we have to fully cooperate and provide necessary uh, support. In that regard, uh, China has been promoting some global uh, support uh, through Belt and Road Initiative. Right, uh, recently, mm -hmm. uh, President Xi Jinping has announced very important three global initiatives like exactly. a global uh, security initiative, uh -huh. 
Global Development Initiative and Global Civilization Initiative. How do you see the significance of these three initiatives that you just mentioned, which were proposed by China? It was an initiative of China, but this is an initiative for global. Of course, China is a number two economic power of the world. So you have a lot of resources, you have a lot of high education level, and you have a real influence in global politics. But China is just one country among 193. Therefore, I think President Xi Jinping's vision is very much appreciated. I hope that these three initiatives really can help other developing countries who really need support so that they can be on board on sustainable path of their life and their succeeding generation. You just mentioned about the Belt and Road Initiative. This year, 2023, marks the 10th anniversary for uh, this initiative. And this is also the topic under the spotlight here at the forum. So what kind of role do you think the initiative has played in strengthening international cooperation as well as um, bolstering development? I know that this uh, Belt and Road uh, has been appreciated by many countries, particularly um, those uh, Asian and Middle East and African countries. And it will be very important to have um, closer consultation mm -hmm. with the recipient the countries and how and what they are in need of rather than just providing the support. So um, rather than giving something, just uh, educate and how to uh, train them uh, to be, uh, for them to be able to do their own uh, economic uh, policies and economic development. I think that will be the better way. Uh, I know that uh, one of the uh, basic uh, principles and guidelines of uh, Belt and Road is to have a um, very inclusive consultation with the country's concern. And I think that is uh, something very good. Early in March, China has uh, helped mediate the restoration of diplomatic relations between Saudi Arabia and Iran. This is a um, historical step for not only the two countries, but also in building a more peaceful global future. So what do you think is the significance of this? I really appreciate and highly commend the role China, under the leadership of President Xi Jinping, had played already. So you know that uh, how divided the Middle Eastern countries. Now, Saudi Arabia, the biggest and most powerful Middle Eastern country, decided to normalize uh, their diplomatic relationship under the auspices of um, uh, China. Then why not with other countries? Then there will be a bigger area leaving peacefully, more peacefully. Let's talk a little bit about your um, decade of service at the helm of UN. The very first Secretary General at the UN, Mr. Trakve Lee, he said, the Secretary General is the most impossible job on earth. But when you work as the UN chief, your motto back then was uh, to change the uh, impossible mission into possible ones. Well, Mr. Ben, dealing with 193 member states is by no means an easy task. In transforming the impossible job to possible mission, what is the key? I think there is not such an impossible job if we have a strong commitment. So from the beginning of my mandate, I will try to make this impossible job into a possible job. So I really try to look at positive side. I have always been a positive mind. I've been talking to my UN staff, if you don't have any positive mind, positive attitude, you never achieve anything. If you are just disappointed and give up your hope, then nothing can happen. Whether you will be successful or not, you will have to continue to strike until you can achieve something. You may be successful, you may fail, uh, but even though you may fail, if you repeat, then I think you will get support from other people and you will be able to achieve something. That has been my 
a philosophical belief. Yeah. Actually, climate change has always been one of the major issues that top your agenda. And when you worked at UN, you said that, quote unquote, here, many people regard me as gentle and soft person. But when it comes to climate, I become much more passionate and sometimes angry. Well, Mr. Ben, I know you have visited so many frontiers of those climate crises. So why the issue of climate change uh, always matter so much to you? The climate change issues has not been given much uh, political attention by the world's political leaders. While scientists, climatologists, they were really fighting to find out how this climate change would affect the humanity as well as our planet Earth. Mm -hmm. As I said, whenever and when there is an issue of climate, I am really angry because the political leaders, they have not shown much political weight and importance on climate. The most recent report of IPCC said that as we are doing now, then by 2050, then global temperature rise would rise to 2.8 degrees Celsius. That means then that's the end of our humanity. This and is catastrophic. This earth will not be a livable place, first of all. So we have no time to lose. We have to do all. Mm -hmm. China has promised and pledged uh, two years ago that President Xi Jinping said China will hit this carbon neutrality by 2060. Mm -hmm. President Xi Jinping had announced that China would build to use clean energy. I think this is the most ambitious target and which I applaud and I commend. Each day, there are millions of stories. Each one can open new perspectives, new possibilities. Wherever you look, we are there to see, discover, explore. We put the pieces together to find what really matters to you. All around the world, all around the clock. Our reporters are at home across the globe. From our headquarters in Beijing and production centers in Washington, Nairobi, and London. China Global Television Network. Stories from across the globe, reaching people across the globe. CGTN. See the difference. I see a country on the move. There is my opportunity. Is it good to change so fast? Yes, but it's a challenge. We have one foot in the future. but we never forget our past. We need to talk to one another. And listen. More than a billion voices telling their stories. Rediscovering China, only on CGTN. Images may appear to be identical, but looks can be deceiving. The difference is not always obvious. It has to be discovered. There are always different sides to a story. We put the focus on the details. To see more, to understand better. CGTN, see the difference. Mr. Ben, will you bid farewell at the end of your term at the UN? You said it's like Cinderella, you know, because everything changes during midnight. So now over six years has passed. So how's your so-called Cinderella life been going? Do you still get up at 4 a.m. just like what you did when you work at the UN? <laughs> I'm, I'm not the Secretary General. Of course, you know, many nights uh, I spent the sleepless and I had to uh, rush to uh, things had happened. 
but as a former Secretary General, I send my moral support. That's the difference. Uh, but I really appreciate the United Nations and Secretary General and hardworking, hardworking UN staff who are spending day and night to help those people who are in a difficult uh, situation so that they can receive at least the minimum the human, uh, human uh, treatment, human support. Uh, then I'm sometimes very much moved by just unconditional support from many, many uh, countries. Look at the case in uh, the Turkish earthquake. earthquake. Yes, uh, look at the case earthquake. of a Haitian earthquake. I have seen thousands, thousands of people, medical doctors, just rescuers, and just the civilians. They just rushed to Haiti and they rushed to Turkey. This is uh, humanity. That this is what we expect uh, from this world. Well, globalization and also multilateralism are now facing strong headwinds. And Mr. Ben, you've always been a very strong and firm supporter and believer of multilateral cooperation. So how do you think these can be revitalized in the 21st century? Now, many people are concerned, including myself, when multilateralism is much more needed at this time, unfortunately, multilateralism is paralyzed. It's not working. While the number of cri crises are increasing, including climate change, poverty, and the public health issues, who knows what will happen next, next day. Therefore, I have been really urging the Security Council members and whole United Nations member states should be united and should have a global vision. All global crises, global challenges can only be handled and resolved by global partnership and global vision. In that, China can play a very important role. So I really count uh, on China to do much more to promote multilateralism better and strengthen more. China has been a very strong believer and supporter of globalization and opening up as well. So and it has this commitment that the door of China will only get wider and wider. So what's your take on that? Role of China is very important. Therefore, I sincerely hope that all these um, rich and powerful and resourceful countries should really collaborate more and even uh, deeply. I am really uh, very much concerned about U.S. and the China uh, conflict. Mm -hmm. How do you see uh, that? This is not the time to engage in conflict, whatever differences there may be. This is a time for harmonizing their differences. differences. I know that China has a different system, United States has a different system. Mm -hmm. Everybody, every country, you cannot expect that same, same system, same ideology. There are always uh, differences. I would like to uh, quote a very important uh, you know, Chinese word. Uh, Kui Tong Chon Yi. Kui Tong Chon Yi. Yes. Uh, I, I have written like oh. this. Yes. It's to pursue. Kui Tong Chon Yi. Yes, Chon This is um, pursue commonality, mm -hmm. but at the same time, acknowledge the difference. Mm -hmm. When you acknowledge the difference among and between the countries, while you pursue, the commonality, then I think we'll e be easily able to solve all the problems. Mr. Ben, there are also some concerns and debates about UN with the international body turning 80 in about two years. The debate about how to reform this organization into a more efficient, effective and uh, more inclusive one is relevant than ever before. What's your take on that? There are still many areas for reform. UN is not a perfect organization, just like many other international organizations. 
just as individual, you cannot find any perfect individual. But when it comes to international organization, where 193 member states are working together, they bring in all different ideas, different practices, uh, different systems, different customs. Therefore, it's uh, very difficult to uh, harmonize all these uh, differences. Mm -hmm. uh, my mandate as a Secretary General, I really did, while engaging in uh, political uh, conflict resolution and development issues, I really did my best to change the United Nations as the organization can be respected and also deal with many challenging issues effectively. Uh, to the expectation of um, member states. Well, Mr. Ben, I know you love Chinese culture, especially the Chinese calligraphy, and you've written many traditional Chinese expressions. For instance, Shang Shan Ruo Shui, yes. the highest good is like water, or Jia He Wan Shi Xing, harmonious and peaceful family brings prosperity. What is your favorite Chinese character in calligraphy? And if you're asked to present a calligraphy to describe the complex world, we leave now, what would it be? As a young boy, I learned a lot of uh, Chinese wisdom and Chinese characters too. Even though I'm not able to speak, but I can write and read Chinese characters. I've been uh, speaking about uh, uh, Sang Shen Ro Sui yes. as uh, one of my uh, principles of a motto. Mr. Ben, these are the questions. Do you mind signing our uh, book? You can write it in Chinese <laughs> or in English. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. During the interview, Mr. Ben Ki Moon told us that when he worked as the ace Secretary General of the United Nations, he always believes it is important to find hope, even in the most unlikely places. Now, as the chairman of Buol Forum for Asia, he expects the forum to play a role in enhancing economic ties, not only here in Asia, but also worldwide. With profound changes taking place, he believes it is important to learn from the Chinese wisdom of seeking commonality and acknowledging differences. He also called on all parties to make joint efforts and move forward hand in hand. With that, we're going to wrap up this edition of Leaders Talk. I'm Zhou Yun reporting from Buao. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.